Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Linton cast. Today, we have Audrey Cooney, who is a principal channel consultant at HubSpot. We're very happy to have her. Uh, Linton as an agency works very closely with her, and she is just um, a real gift to be working with. So, Audrey, um, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about what you do as a principal channel consultant. Yeah, thanks, Roman. I really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you about workflows today. Of course. So what I do at HubSpot, I work with our top tier solutions partners in North America. So Linton included in that group. And that means I help those partners with anything from using HubSpot for themselves, consulting on their own strategy, but primarily the focus is anything to do with our mutual customers. So whether that be consulting on your marketing strategy, sales, service for those customers, digging really deep into the product, and then also helping partners to expand their network within our partner community, but also here at HubSpot so we can create opportunities for each other. Great, that's a, that's a really great uh, overview of what you do. And, and as you can see, we're, any agency that's working with HubSpot is very tightly connected with HubSpot. So I think that's a, a very important point. Uh, as you said, Audrey, we're gonna be talking about workflows uh, generally and also a bit strategically about workflows. So let's kind of just start by uh, asking when should somebody use a workflow? Uh, I, I think that workflows are engines of HubSpot, but I think a lot of times people get confused as to when is the right time to use them and when is not a right time to use them. Yeah, good question. And I completely agree. It's absolutely an engine of HubSpot. It's also one of my favorite areas of the tool. So good times to be using a workflow would be automating an internal process, whether that be something like updating your contacts into a new life cycle stage after they complete a series of actions. It could also be something like automatically putting those contacts through a drip campaign. So sending them a series of nurturing emails. Other great times to be using a workflow would be, let's say the handoff from marketing to your sales team. So I've had my contacts reach a certain lead score, a certain life cycle stage, let's automate handing them off by assigning them to a sales rep and creating a deal for them. It could also be post sale. So looking at service, thinking about support tickets, automating that process as well. Um, and then another very classic use case would be following up after a trade show. So making sure that your uh, contacts are getting all of that information that they consumed during the trade show in a timely manner and keeping everything top of mind. Right. Uh, and trade shows are not just about swag, they're about workflow follow-ups, correct? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Great. Uh, so you mentioned some of the use cases for workflows. Can you talk about some of the, the best practices that people should think about when implementing workflows? Definitely. So a couple of key things that I always try to make sure are checked off when putting together a workflow so that it works as best as possible would be setting a goal for the workflow. Mm. So I mean that both in the tool, but also yeah. just as part of your strategy. So right. what is it that you'd like to accomplish by the time all of your actions have executed in the workflow? So if we take that example of the drip campaign. It's nurturing emails separated by somewhere like three to five days. That way your contacts aren't getting hammered with emails from you. It's actually mm -hmm. happening pretty natural. So those three to five day delays, that's a best practice. But then if I tie back to what I mentioned earlier, the goal, that should be something very clear, like clicking a call, a call to action button in the email itself, or filling out a form that they're accessing from one of those emails. That way, as soon as they take that action, they're removed from the workflow and they don't continue to receive emails asking them to do something they've already done. Right, and that's kind of the, the worst thing that can happen is that if you have a salesperson reaching out organically to them and they're sending emails to them, but they're still getting a workflow uh, and it can be confusing in the sales process. So if they hit a goal, get them out, let somebody talk to them naturally. Exactly, yep, yeah, exactly. And another best practice that I have to plug in here is sure. 
making sure that you add a delay before an if then branch. So uh, I learned this the hard way when I first started <laughs> working with workflows and started at HubSpot, but um, workflows happen instantaneously. So as soon as you turn that on, it's reading through all of the actions you've set up and saying, are these statements true? If they are, I'm firing right away. So if you have something where it's going to be contingent upon a human being taking an action, let's say clicking on a CTA in an email, filling out a form or something internal, maybe a sales rep needs to update a deal property. If there's an if then branch, make sure you always put a delay before so that any actions that might be incorporated in the if then branch have time to actually happen. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise you're going to see every single contact just go down the no side. And that obviously isn't very helpful. Right, I, I've, I've done that myself before. So it's uh, something to watch out for. Mm -hmm. So talking about, we talked a little bit about best practice, why we should use workflows, best practices. And now let's, let's kind of um, finish up by talking about the, some of the common mistakes or some, some of the things that you classically see that maybe aren't, aren't necessarily a best practice that you would recommend against. Yeah, so definitely the missing the fact of there should be a delay before an if then branch. So that's kind of double dipping on that one. But overloading a workflow. So oftentimes, if I am helping out a partner or one of their customers with a workflow that they've already built out, and it's just overloaded, there's way too much information in there. I always try to remind them, think about it as simply as possible. And sometimes it's actually better to break out a workflow into multiple versus trying to load it all into one with crazy if then branching. 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So don't get me wrong. If then branching is great, but you don't want to overload it. Otherwise you could be in a bit of a sticky situation. Yeah. I've, I've seen workflows, client workflows that you're, you're scrolling down and then you have the if then branches and you're, it feels like you're scrolling all the way to the right and to the left. And it's just, sometimes it is easier to um, keep, simplify it, especially for, for maintenance purposes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, other kind of gotchas. Oh, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I guess another kind of gotcha in workflows, there's certainly a lot of safety nets. So things mm -hmm. like the re-enrollment triggers, there are a lot of notices in there that will say, hey, make sure you don't do this. Otherwise, your workflow will be in an infinite loop. I actually just saw that yesterday. Yeah, I see those too. Um, yeah. So just making sure to check your re-enrollment triggers and what that criteria looks like so that people aren't accidentally getting stuck in that infinite loop or your deals aren't going round and round. Um, so making sure you always check that criteria too. Great, great. Any, uh, here's a bonus question for you. Any kind of favorite workflow that you've built or any kind of workflow that you thought was really nifty that, that comes to mind? Yes, actually, uh, the one that I built or helped you build yesterday. That was, um, that was kind of a nifty one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that really showed a lot of different areas of HubSpot coming together, and it yeah. wasn't crazy difficult to build. It was a little bit of a problem, but yep. the use case there was wanting to automate creating renewal opportunities after an initial sale has closed. So that's a really great creative way to use a combination of workflows and then also calculated properties. So yep. not every customer is going to have access to workflows or calculated properties. Those are SKU or product specific in HubSpot. Um, but being able to pull those two things together where you can say, okay, now that this initial sale has closed, I'd like to automatically create a deal that represents their annual or six month renewal. And then I want to multiply that amount by a certain percentage so that I can see the price increase over time as my customer continues to renew. So that mm -hmm. was pretty cool. Yeah. And I think we both were we're thinking of it that it would be maybe more complex than it than than it was, where we had to copy over temporary properties. But uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was it's two workflows, and one is the calculation workflow, and one is the copy workflow. And like we were talking about earlier, before before the Linton cast, it, it was it's a very elegant workflow. 
It is, yeah. And you don't really need to tinker with it. It just yep. works in the background and you can forget about it, which is the point of automation. Great, great. Well, uh, thank you very much, Audrey, for this. Any final words of workflow wisdom before we uh, wrap this latest edition of the Linton Cast up? Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me, Roman. This was a great conversation. Love talking about workflows. Um, I guess my last piece of wisdom would be make sure to check in on your workflows. So it is great to set them and forget them, but don't really forget them. Um, make sure you're checking back in, updating them as your content offers change, as process changes. So maybe more on the six month or quarterly cadence. You don't need to be in there weekly, but make sure you check in on them and be sure they're up to date. There's also the ability to think about good naming conventions from the mm. beginning. So yeah. think about future you and how you'd like to keep it organized. Those are some good starting points as well. Right. Yeah. The last thing you want is Roman's workflow, uh, Roman's September workflow, bad naming convention, right? Yeah. No one's sure except maybe Roman, but who knows? Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Audrey. This has been super helpful. I hope people find this helpful and have some insight into, um, into workflows. And please don't, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to HubSpot and HubSpot support or reach out to Linton as well. We're happy to help you think through these. Uh, and uh, until next time on the Linton cast, we'll see ya.